Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. <laughs> there, I just took a picture of my co-conspirator Laura Martin taping me. It's so easy to take pictures today that we can forget how difficult it used to be. Here at the Historical Society, we were once asked whether we had any photos of soldiers from the War of 1812. Nope, the record is slim on images before the 1850s. So let's take a quick rundown of the types of photography. There's a chance you might have some of these, so it's good to know what they are. The earliest known images are daguerreotypes. They're not true photographs because there's no, no negative produced. These were one-offs. The image it was printed directly onto copper plate. You'll find these in cases. In fact, you can't even see the image clearly without the case. Daguerreotypes are easy to identify. They have a silvery finish, and if you tilt them just a bit away from the light, you'll see a negative image. Leave them in their protective cases. Don't fool around with that. If it doesn't have a silver finish, it's either an ambrotype or a ferrotype. Ambrotypes invented in 1845 were printed directly onto the glass. Sometimes the sitter's cheeks were tinted pink. If you tilt it, it won't show an image in reverse. Ferrotypes came along soon after and were much less expensive. They were printed out on thin sheets of iron, and although they're often cased to look like ambrotypes and daguerreotypes, they don't need to be. The simplest way to figure out whether it's an ambrotype or a ferrotype is to use a magnet. It will stick to the ferrotype. These are commonly called tin types, but they're not tin, they're iron. We also call aluminum foil tin foil. There's just something about tin, I guess. True photography enters around the time of the Civil War when wet plate negatives are used. It allowed a photographer to make copies, and this is when photography really takes off. It was very popular to have your picture processed onto a small calling card size called a carte de visite, or onto a larger cabinet card. And you could have a bunch printed, send them to your friends and family. I mean, it's not Facebook yet, but the technology was moving along. There was another type of photography used at this time period called the cyanotype that used the same technology as blueprints. If you have any odd blue images in your collection, someone in your family was an enthusiast of cyanotypes. These could be processed onto paper or fabric like this. We usually scan these, convert them to black and white when we use them for anything in public. Photographs were also used for entertainment, not just portraiture. The stereo view was a popular way to view images in something like a 3D. A camera with dual lenses and eye width apart took two photos that were later mounted on a card like this, and it would be placed into a viewer, and wow, it's Niagara Falls! Oh, actually, this is a picture of the Robinson Seminary. <laughs> Uh, you may remember spending hours looking through a Viewmaster, which was a similar technology if you were a kid. Photography was also very popular when the postcard craze hit from the early 20th century. Happily for historians, most popular cards featured images of local scenes. We use these all the time. If you have photo collections at home, here are some tips to take care of them. Keep them away from light. We store photos individually in mylar sleeves and inside a folder. A good photo album will work, but avoid the kind that directly glues or sticks the images to the pages. Some color photos will fade into an orangey pink color. A lot of pictures from the 1970s and 80s do that. There's just not much you can do about it now. Sorry about that. And three, for the love of God, label your photos. It doesn't have to be much. Even a date will help. And try to get names. I mean, more than just Aunt Caddy. Who's Aunt Caddy? Is she Catherine? Catherine who? Label the pictures on the back near the edge in pencil if possible. Here's an example of what happens when you label a Polaroid on the back with ink. Bleeds right through poor Harry Truman. There's more to say on photographs. They're amazing historical records. The next challenge is going to be figuring out how to collect the millions of digital images floating around. That's going to change the whole archival world. Label those cat photos, folks. To see pictures of Exeter, check out our website at www.exeterhistory.org.